Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a special one. We are going to be mood reading for four days. Please don't mind my wet hair, by the way. I washed my hair this morning, so it was still a little damp, but I'm sure it'll be dry by like the end of the day. For today, like I said, we will be mood reading. I already have some books in mind, but I won't say what they are just because I don't wanna create expectations that might change also the reason why it's called mood reading. In the last video, I had a reading vlog up. In that video, I started reading Unravel Me. I didn't finish it in the video, so I do plan on finishing it today. This is one book that I definitely do want to finish before the vlog is over. I got about 50% into the book, well, more like 40%. The story is going really well so far. I um, The plotline started to pick up. You're obviously reading from Juliet's perspective in this book, but there's a scene that happens in this book that you read about in one of Tahiri Mafi's novellas, Destroy Me. In Destroy Me, you read by Warner, the antagonist in this book. You read from Warner's perspective. And I realized when I was reading Fracture Me that there's a scene in this book that takes place in Destroy Me, except you're reading it from Warner's perspective. So that was like interesting to see. I didn't know that that's how the story will like connect together. I didn't even know that they would connect in this way. I thought it was just a separate instance or scene that you're reading from Warner's perspective that you wouldn't read about or touch upon in Unravel Me. Um, but I really liked that, so it, that really got me into the story because you read it from Warner's perspective and now you're reading it from Juliet's perspective and you understand why this situation happened and how it played out in the end. I do know for sure that once I finish Unravel Me, I will be reading Fracture Me. Fracture Me is the novella that takes place after Unravel Me, except instead of reading from Juliet or Warner's perspective, you're going to be reading from Adam's perspective. This one, you read about basically Adam's mindset after his relationship, so to speak, with Juliet. Juliet isn't in the best mental space. She feels alone and she f there's a lot of expectations that are on her shoulders that it's difficult for her to meet them. I will definitely finish this book by the end of this vlog. I do, like I said before, have other books in mind, but I'm not sure if I will still feel like reading them once I do finish Unravel Me because I would like to finish reading this book first, then move on to Fracture Me, and then pick up a new book. But we're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna start reading it now and we'll see how much progress we make. Let's get into it. Okay, I have to say something. I'm loving this new like family aspect in the book because Juliet's new friends are so funny. The way they butt heads with each other and play around is so funny. Like I just read a scene. This isn't like anything special, but I just read a scene where Winston, a new friend of Juliet, is very grumpy from his overnight shifts of like just spying and making sure like the whole area of the rebel camp is like safely protected and there's no one threatening um, to enter and anything bad happens. He's just called Brendan, a guy whose superpower is electrical currents and he has the ability to basically recharge his body. He doesn't have to sleep if he doesn't want to, but he chooses to sleep he doesn't want to have to like recharge his body like a battery winston just called him a fetus because he feeds off of energy like a child <laughs> and then juliet just found out that brendan's birthday was the last week so she's like oh i hope you have a lot of happy days and i hope you have a good year and she's like trying to figure out what nice things to say because i guess she's not used to like one speaking to people and two saying nice things and saying nice things like that because she never has a good time with her own life and brendan is just like thank you thank you for that and he's just smiling at her looking into her eyes kenji's sitting at the table because they're all eating breakfast together and or kenji gets up to throw away his breakfast him and juliet's breakfast he turns and looks at brendan was like get it out of your head bro just stop don't do it and brendan's like what and he's like get it out of your head brendan catches on he's like I know, 
And Kenji's like, uh-huh, do you? <laughs> so I've basically gotten a hint that Brendan has a crush on Juliet, or he's like looking at Juliet in a different light now. I don't think anything's ever gonna happen from this, but it was so cute because Brendan is so nice to Juliet and this was such a little cute moment and funny moment for them all and it was just uh, I want more moments like this and I love like Juliet's training in this in this book so we're finally getting a little more into that but I just had to say that it was so cute and so funny because Winston's so grumpy Brendan's so soft and like cuddly even though he can hurt people with his electrical currents and Kenji's just so playful and so blunt he's just like get it out of your head bro and Juliet's just so like I'm just here I'm trying to get through my day so that's all I just had to say that moving on any further into this book i am about like a little over like 50 percent in the book can you see that there you go and so much stuff has happened i have learned so much information that i never thought like the way this plot would just twist and this is a sequel it's the second book so i can't say too much warner has in a sense entered the story again warner's father has entered the story war has broken out between the reestablishment and the rebel army omega point that's the name of the the army omega point we're gonna see a lot more of warner for the second half of this book in the fallout anderson his father warner's father got injured and a huge reveal has been made and i learned a lot of information about adam that's all i'm gonna say for right now but i'm hooked i have about like four hours left of this book so i would like to finish it today what time is it to it is about four o'clock now if i don't finish it today i'll definitely be finishing it tomorrow but this book mm, so good so good i'm gonna leave you now and i'm gonna get back to reading this goodbye <laughs> To do a quick little update because what i just read in this book had shocked me to the core i didn't think i could get shocked more in this book we just learned something about warner as he is talking more with juliet and they're basically getting to know each other a little bit more and he has revealed some information that explains why he should basically stay with Juliet and I, I, I don't want to say anymore but the way Warner acts in Shatter Me 
and in this book as well and just like even uh, you don't even have to read from his perspective you can just see the way he acts based on um the way Juliet perceives him from this conversation that he has just had with Juliet you basically understand that the reason why he is the way he is is because of the way he is brought up even in Shatter Me you already know that he has accepted his fate has accepted that this is the way he is and this is the way he's always ever going to be and this is the way he views himself and he views the world and he views other people and it's just so sad and the way Warner has switched up in his conversations before with Juliet to this conversation now is so like it's like he flipped a switch and I could not believe what I was reading but a discovery has been made and I needed to share that but that is all I will get back to reading this book and I will probably see you guys when I'm finished goodbye progress on my reading since the last time we spoke as you can tell from the last clip i finished reading unravel me i in still enjoyed this book but the expectations that i had going into this book were different from the way the book played out the way the plot and like also the romance played out now i can't give too much information away just because this is part of a series and there are things that happen in this book that you need to know what happened in the first book to like understand so there's not much i could say but what i can say is certain details were revealed in this book that i definitely wasn't expecting there was a certain trope that was introduced in this book that definitely isn't my favorite i'm not gonna say what the trope is because that is a spoiler but this type of trope is a type of trope that I see in like shows, uh, movies, and also obviously books. I have read other books that have this kind of trope and it's it offers up a different kind of romance plot to the story, but not in a great way. Sometimes it can be a little annoying to the story. And book, I will say I was definitely shocked by it. I'm not too upset about it like i feel like i could still enjoy the book later on in the series i rate i decided to rate this star this book four stars the things that i just didn't necessarily like about the book was it had to do with julia as a main character she learns a lot of information in this book that she decides not to share with the rest of the group and because this whole series is based upon war and a rebel army trying to fight against basically the government who is the re-establishment i her not sharing certain pieces of information is detrimental to the people who are around her and results in like consequences later on in the book i understand why, why julia doesn't want to share this information because it hurts the relationships that she has built throughout from the last book but especially in this book but it's hurting other people more than it is helping her situation and she doesn't want to get caught in the middle between certain issues that arise but because information isn't being like communicated with everyone else it's creating larger issues it wasn't it didn't make me hate the book but it didn't make the book as enjoyable obviously it offered up more like 
problems and consequences to the story to allow the plot to move forward and it, but it did create a lot of unnecessary drama in the story so that is why I decided to rate the book four stars but I still enjoyed this book once I got a hundred pages into it yo clockwork I was going through and through this book I finished this book this is the second day of this vlog I finished this book last night. I read oh, a little under 300 pages yesterday. That's amazing for me. I read for six hours yesterday. That's amazing for me. I will gladly take that. So this book was still enjoyable. It was just certain aspects of it that I just wasn't a big fan of. I also finished Fracture Me, which is part of the Unite Me of just book as a whole. But Fracture Me, the book that takes place after Unravel Me, I decided to rate this book three stars. Now, it is a novella, so you're not really going to get like a five-star rating typically from novellas. Not saying that three stars is a bad rating. It's just that it's a shorter story. You're not going to get as much information. You do read from a, a different character's perspective, which I definitely like. It's just, it's not a full novel. So it's just, I, I, I don't think I would ever give a novella five stars. And it would ha really have to knock me out of the water. But Fracture Me... I enjoyed it, but I didn't give it such a high rating because I want to say like the first half of the novella, it's a lot of repeated information that you already read about in Unravel Me. So you're reading basically the same scenes that take place in that book. I got bored. I was pretty much bored in the beginning. I thought we would move on from this and like we would really know about like what happens after the events that take place at the end of Unravel Me and that wasn't really the case that was pretty much like the second half of the book or maybe like the last quarter of the novella. Fracture Me you do read from Adam's perspective whereas in Destroy Me you read from Warner's perspective. Reading from Warner's perspective was definitely more entertaining and you do understand him more as an antagonist a villain of the story whereas in Fracture Me you're getting more from Adam's perspective but you're learning he talks a little bit more about Juliet and his relationship with her and you already get a sense of his mindset in Unravel Me so to get a novella that's based on him and he's talking a little bit about the same thing does get a little repetitive but the way Adam's perspective changes in this book and the way he acts and the way he thinks is just so that's why I gave this book three stars it wasn't the best novella I've ever read. I definitely enjoyed Destroy Me more than Fracture Me, but I'm not saying that it's a bad novella. I think, I still definitely think that anyone should read it. And also from Warner's perspective as well, I think that the novellas are definitely a great addition to the series and everyone can benefit from reading from those characters' perspectives, especially since they're not from Juliet's perspective and you want to get an understand of how these characters think and you get a little more insight into these characters childhood their upbringing the way they think why they make certain actions still read this book now now that i finished those two books i still don't know what i'm gonna read next i have a couple options it's either crown of midnight another one it could be powerless by elsie silver the only thing about that book i feel like i'm not necessarily in the mood just as you like i'm not like itching to grab it and to read it i do know that i will enjoy it but i feel like if i read it now i might not enjoy it as much as i think i could so the other two books that i have in mind that i wasn't planning on reading but i just keep looking at the book on my bookshelf and i'm like i know i need to get to you but i need to make sure like i'm set with all my other books one of the books is for olympus volume Four. in the last volume once i read it i felt like reading a touch of darkness which is another persephone and hades greek mythology retelling series it's not a graphic novel like this one it's just a typical like just book like this with like a bunch of words i know that if i start reading lord olympus i'm gonna be in the mood for greek mythology retelling and i'll then want to pick up a touch of ruin so that those are the books that i'm really like skeptical on right now if not then it would be like crown of midnight but i'm gonna end it because my battery is dying right now and we'll see what happens we'll see what i read next see you in the next clip goodbye <laughs>
Hey guys, it has been a few days later, unfortunately, but I'm finally taking the time to record the end of this video. In the last clip, you guys saw that I was still reading Crown of Midnight, and I did make some progress on it, not as much progress as I wanted, but I did reach about like a quarter into the book. I was annotating the book like I said that I wanted to with this book. So like here, I already have a lot of tabs for just being a quarter into the book. So I expect that this book is going to be heavily annotated by the time I reach the end. Let me give you my thoughts on what I think of the book, at least so far. I unfortunately won't be finishing this book in this vlog but I definitely will be finishing it. So from what I read so far, we have picked up the story following Selena as the king's champion two months after she was, I guess, elected or she won the competition in the last book and how her tasks have carried out and how certain decisions have been a little more difficult to follow through on and her whole stance on the kingdom as a whole and you do have her thoughts in the last book as well on how she views the kingdom and like the king and just royalty and like people who spend their time at court in general but in this book you she has a different mindset in a sense so she she thinks of the king the same she thinks of the people at court the same she seems a little more to herself she's a little sadder but now that she is the king's champion she has gained more respect from the guards for example everyone pretty much knows who she is you know, obviously there is some mystery we learn about the king isn't a well-liked one he isn't admired by anyone in this kingdom or in this world so there is talk of a, a rebellion movement trying to work to overthrow the king and put someone else on the throne so that is pretty much what has been happening in the book so far selena is really just trying to get a little more information on it and figure out where she stands in this regard with the king or with the movement or is she gonna follow her own skin that is how this book has been going honestly not to toot my own horn but this is giving five star vibes i'm really enjoying it i cannot wait to continue reading it when i was doing this vlog i was on vacation from work so that's why i was able to at least make in my personal view a lot of progress on these books and i was able to finish two books and at least start a third one but I have returned to work now and it is a little more difficult to dedicate some time to reading. I do definitely and I will dedicate time to read because I do want to make more progress. I do have my own set of reading goals each month. But I'm happy with the amount of progress that I made in this video. Let's talk about the other books that I read in this video. So the first book that I actually finished in this video was Unravel Me. I, in a previous video, I had started this book, but I didn't finish it. So in this video, I was able to finish it. So I finished reading about like half of the last half of the book. And I really did enjoy this. Juliet was a little more difficult character in this book. She was... I, I found her a little more likable and like understanding in the first book but in this book it was kind of hard to understand her point of view at certain points. She did keep certain secrets to herself regarding um, information that she learned about the reestablishment, some information that she learned about other people and she felt like it wasn't her place to share this information which created some unnecessary drama and conflict in the story. I do understand her point of view at the end of the day. However, she I wish that she was able to look at it from a different point of view. So that was one one aspect in this book that I found a little difficult to connect with and I would got a little frustrated with, but it wasn't frustrating enough for me to completely dislike the book. I definitely do like this book. I I kind of view it on the same level as the Shatter Me book. Shatter Me, I do like slightly more. I will definitely be continuing with this series. In terms of her romantic relationships, I can't give too much away, but I completely 
understand where Juliet was coming from in terms of her romantic relationship. There was a lot of drama in this book. It was entertaining to read at certain points, but then at other points, it was just people weren't seeing other people's point of view in order to understand why decisions were being made. That is all I will say. After I finished reading this book, I started reading Unite Me. Unite Me, um, like I said at the beginning of this video, this is a novella and I did already read Destroy Me, which was told from Warner's point of view. So once I finished reading Unravel Me, we then read Fracture Me, which is told from Adam's point of view. And it follows at least the first half of the novella, so like the first 50 pages, you read of like the same scenes and the same dialogue that you read in in Unravel Me, but then the last 50 pages you're reading obviously from Adam's point of view, but you're reading new information that has taken place after the end of Unravel Me. The first half, the first 50 pages, it was a little difficult to get through. I was pretty much bored. Um, just because it's reading the same thing, you're reading the same dialogue. I just finished reading Unravel Me, so to read the same thing again in such a short amount of time, it was a little boring to read and it was just like, I, I knew I had to trek through it, but I was like, okay, what else is there? I hope there's like a little more new information in this. But the last 50 pages, it was interesting to read. I did get sucked into it. It wasn't the best novella I've ever read. I definitely enjoyed Destroy Me over Fracture Me. But reading from Adam's perspective was interesting to say the least. I definitely hold him from a different perspective now compared to what perspective I held him at in Unravel Me. I don't necessarily dislike him. I don't necessarily like him as much as I did before. But I understand his point of view in this book however his way of thinking shifted slightly in terms of the, the war Juliet and his, his, the whole situation he has found himself in since meeting Juliet but I did enjoy this definitely enjoyed Warner's perspective more will I be continuing with this series Absolutely. Those were the three books that I read in this vlog and I'm excited about what else I'm going to read. That is all for today. I will see you guys in, I'm actually about to go and start recording my October TBR. So I will see you guys sooner than you think. Be sure to like this video, leave comments down below of any videos that you guys would like to see from me in the future and I will see you guys. Goodbye.